Well, hello there. Welcome to the second episode of Sheepless Needles, a podcast where we talk about all sorts of crafty things that are vegan. And we look at bunnies and we have cats in laps and it's just a good old time. So pull up a chair. Uh, let's talk about what we've done in two weeks. Um, I did something really cool that I'm, I hope that I am able to do again. Uh, there is a vegan knitting group on Ravelry. Um, and they do a monthly uh, vegan virtual knit, knit meeting. <laughs> and I did that, and it was fabulous. First of all, I love seeing people. Hi, Maggie. I love seeing people in their uh, native habitat doing what they just normally do. I think it's, it's just fun. But it's also fun to be around people who have a similar interest as you. So it was just great to be with a group of people who are into the same thing, you know? There went my glasses. This is going to be the podcast of, hi, the cats are here, and they're hungry, and it's almost dinner time. Yep. So anyway, I did that. Um, I think there's another one coming up in July. I'll leave a link to the Ravelry group in the show notes. Um so much fun and if any of you are watching hi um it was just it was a lot of fun and i look forward to doing them in the future so that was cool um i what else for the last two weeks well let's do this let's do the toot toot ah uh, beep beep toot toot ah uh, beep beep it's horn tooting time people what are you tooting your horn about today leave it in the comments below i will tell you what i am tooting my horn about I love Donna Summer, number one. But number two would be um, this. Wh Shannon, what are you wearing? Why? I am wearing my finished Vertices Unite. Ta-da! So this is my Vertices Unite that I knit uh, with for the Fiber Hustle Knit Along. Um, I think it wraps up in early August. Uh, I used um, Lion Brand... True boo, boo, I cannot say that. True boo sparkle yarn um, in one, two, three, five colors. Um, but at, as a last minute addition, because blue is not my favorite color. And so when I got to section three, I'm not sure why I picked blue to be section three, because it's a big honking section. Um, I decided to throw in, whoa. Um, an acid green lace weight cotton and I just held it together and knit it so it kind of looks like it's got like a little acidy green on the blue so which I like um, what can I tell you about the yarn I really liked working with the yarns it's I think 97 percent bamboo three percent like polyamide which I think is the sparkle um, <clears throat> the only downside to bamboo uh, is that it splits really easily and I would say I don't I wouldn't say that's a hindrance for using it ever like I would never not use bamboo because of that however my caveat to that would be is as someone who <laughs> has a tendency to make mistakes and have to tink back or frog back rows if you have to frog it back and rework it it really starts splitting and then it gets a little bit hard to work with so in the future, I think what I will do is if I am doing a project with bamboo and I have a little boo-boo, um, when I tink it back, I will break the yarn and weave back in a new strand so that it will not split as easily. Because that was, I think that was really the only issue I ran into. Um, well, that's a lie. The first issue was that I just started out doing the large and quickly realized that the large was going to be way too large, like beyond schlank it. I don't even know what I would call it. And I don't think I would have had enough yarn, nor would I have had enough space to even wrap myself in. I mean, like it would have been crazy. So um, I changed over to the small. Now, I don't really see that as being a problem as much as I wasn't paying attention to how large and in charge it was going to be. So I am so happy with it. Um, this is section one here, and then section two, 
And then this is the section that I was telling you about with the acid green. I don't know if I can get, there we go. Um, and I think that just adds a little bit of my personality into it where it's kind of jarring and looks a little bit out of place, but it's really not. That sums me up. And then that's the end. And I chose to use um, one of the lighter colors as the i bo border. I'm super happy with it. I had my husband try it on and it actually looks really good on him and I might just actually give it to him because th these are more colors he wears than I wear. So that in the future, if I want to knit one for myself, um, I think what I would do is be a little bit more Beetlejuice about it probably, um, where it would be black and white with like a bright purple and maybe a bright orange, but really the main color I would want to be probably like a charcoal gray or a black. I'd want to muddy that down a little bit. I don't wear color generally. <laughs> I am a, I wear a lot of black. <laughs> so I finished that. So toot toot. And then I also finished in the gaming spectrum of my life. Um, I had been playing the game Mass Effect. Um, and I finished the first Mass Effect. Uh, I really liked it. I think I'm going to enjoy playing Mass Effect 2 and 3. I am giving myself a timeline for Mass Effect 2 to complete it by the end of August. We'll see how that goes. Um, if we have a really hot summer where I can't be outside a lot, I, I think it's doable. But if we cool down a little bit, I'll probably be outdoors more and that might not be something that I want to be in the basement playing. Um, but we're going to have to see what the weather's like. Like yesterday, this is how crazy it is here. Yesterday, it was 71 and stunning outside. Today, it's 90 and humid to the point where, like, your hair is just wet if you go outside and come back in. It's nasty. So if it's like that, I don't think there'll be a problem with me hanging out in the basement playing games. So those are my two uh, horn toots, which I am, I'm impressed with myself. And whatever, you know, horn tooting you're doing on your end, kudos, leave it in the comments. So what am I working on? Um, well, I finished that and didn't do a heck of a lot of knitting. Um, so I still have things on my needles that I haven't touched. So I have a dotted raise, <laughs> Stephen West, on my needles. Haven't touched it, not gonna show it to you this week. I have the honeycomb blanket, Stephen West. <laughs> Haven't touched it, not gonna show it to you. At least not this week. Uh, I also have a sweater that I am working on, which I have touched, which I will show you my progress. It is, guess who the pattern's by? Yeah, Stephen West. It is the Painting Honeycomb Sweater. And let me get to the front page of the pattern here and I can show you that. It is a paid for pattern and I'll leave a link for it. Uh, so far, um, I'm really enjoying it. Toot. It is the very first sweater I've ever knit. So I don't really have anything to compare it to to tell you whether it's enjoyable or not other than the fact that I'm just so far so good knock on whatever you got. All right, so, ugh. I don't know how much of this you're gonna actually be able to see. Whoa, and I don't wanna lose my stitches. So, all right, I am working on, this is like t the back, and then this would be the front, right? So I just started the yoke, and it's the contrast color repeat in the yoke that I just started. So there's a pop of orange in there. Um, the yarn is Premier Everyday Basic DK, 100% acrylic. I really like it. I have no complaints about it. Color, I think, is Raven. And then for my contrast colors, which make up the honeycomb on the yoke, um, I am using... Hang on. I do have a ball band. Hang on. Let me pop this ball band out because I really... And I'm going to pick up my glasses that my cat knocked on the floor. Hold the line. Okay. 
because I can't read a label. I need a little eye assistance. Um, okay, I am using from Knit Picks, Comfy and the Worsted Weight. Um, it's 109 yards and a 50 gram ball. Uh, it is a four weight. It is 75% Pima cotton, 25% acrylic. Um, so far, so good. I've only used it on the first repeat. I like the feel of it. Um, it's really soft, pliable, no complaints. Okay, so this is the first repeat that I already did. Um, this colorway is, it's just a number, T381. We will call it Russet. And then I have a brown. And then I have a blue. So the repeat is going to be like that, and then it'll go brown and then orange. So it's a, there'll be five rows of honeycomb, I believe. Um, I'm happy with that. I think it'll be cute. And the, these, these are colors I would wear. So I don't think we need to worry about me giving it to my husband. So there's that. Uh, it's going really well. No complaints. Um, I'm not sure how long it will take me. I'm a little intimidated about a a by like the end of the yoke going into the arms like I said I've never done a sweater before so I may be screaming out for help momentarily we will find out so that's what's on my needles and what's on your needles what do you got going on are you doing any knit alongs are you doing anything fun um, I decided after I don't know where I heard this so bear with me on this but I think it was Dave Grohl and he was giving an interview about music and like music's place in his life and you know all that kind of good stuff and he had made a comment that all music is part of one song like there's one universal song and every song that's created on our planet is part is like a key or is a note in that universal song and that really resonated with me. I really like that idea. Um, it gives fl fluidity uh, to an art, essentially. It's a living thing that grows and morphs and adapts as time goes on. Um, and it's not necessarily linear either, um, but obviously we're gonna look at it in a linear perspective. Um, I think that's kind of how I view most art that it's all part of a bigger piece. So in that framework, I kind of like to, to look at knitting in a similar way where it's all part of the same craft with different people with their individual voices and their individual perspective adding I don't know, gradient to it, I don't, to a degree, I'm not sure I can explain exactly what I mean by that. But I think all art is living. It's a living, breathing entity that generation after generation kind of picks up, picking up stitches, you know, picks up and kind of runs with it. And I'm just, I love, there's something about that notion that just, I really, really like. So in the spirit of that, I was trying to figure out in terms of the hobbies that I have, how can I like marry hobbies together? And obviously I'm a huge, well, not obviously, I'm, I'm a big D&Der. I love Dungeons and Dragons. And there is an online game that I've been watching for years called Critical Role. And they have done two completely separate campaigns. Um, if you have a lot of time to spare, I mean, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot because each episode is about four hours. And I, I mean, there's hundreds of episodes. It, it's not something you can binge watch and get caught up quickly. But anyway, they're going to start a season or a campaign three with all new characters. So if you are, have ever been interested in watching something like that, if you get a chance, jump in when they start campaign three again I don't know when that is but I found on Ravelry a group of 
critters, which are fans of Critical Role. They have a crit knit group, which I, I'm just fascinated by. So they are inspired by, you know, characters and episodes and they create patterns and they knit them. And I was like, well, I got to throw my support that way. So I bought the Crit Knits book. And I think it's, I forget how many patterns are in it, but there's like a tea cozy, there's socks, there's, you know, shawls, there's, it kind of runs the gamut. And I picked out, like, I guess the way I want to marry my hobbies is I'm going to knit one of the shawls out of that to marry my love of knitting with my love of not only Dungeons and Dragons, but critical role and of the character Molly mock and the shawl here. I have the thing sitting here. I'll just grab it. Um, it's a paid for pattern. So I'm not going to like show you a lot of it, but I can show you the front page. Um, it's called the, what? sorry, the tea leaf tarot shawl. And it is designed by Mandy B and it's inspired by Molly Mock Tea Leaf of the Mighty Nine. And Molly Mock, uh, great character. I don't want to give any spoilers. He is a tiefling. Um, he's very naughty in such a flamboyant and wonderful way. And uh, anyway, he read, t he, when you meet him, he's part of a traveling carnival. Um, and he reads tarot cards and he wears wonderful clothing. <laughs> so the shawl is inspired just by the character. Um, at some point, I would love to see someone knit the coat he wore, which I don't know that I'm going to do it justice. But anyway, I'm going to knit this. And the thing that I liked about it, and I don't know if you can see this because I printed it in black and white, but it's almost like it's not a peacock feather, but it kind of looks like a peacock feather. And I just thought I would love to do it in kind of like a peacock green or blue. And I happen to have this and I'm trying to get this in lighting that makes it, this looks so blue on camera. It is actually a really deep teal. So it's a one skein project, fingering weight. This is Twister, 55% cotton, 45% acrylic. Um, I have not done a lot of lace work, so I thought this would be a good way to dip my toes into lace work and support other critters out there who love, love Critical Role and knit. So I'm going to get that on my needles very soon. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like even though it's a one skein project with it being lace work and it being a little bit pattern intensive, I am probably going to slow myself down. So it, it could take me a little bit longer, which is fine. The thing I really like about it, she charted it too. So there's, you know, typed out instructions, but there's chart instructions. And I really, I really want to learn via charting. I, I don't know why it's the same way I feel about sheet music. So I've got that coming up, but I thought that was a pretty good marriage of like Dungeons and Dragons and knitting, obviously. And I'm not sure what that's going to look like in the future for future projects of how to marry different hobbies that I have together to become part of a universal song or a universal craft or just however you want to say that. Um, I do paint miniatures and I paint miniatures for gaming, obviously. Um, well, not obviously, I guess you could just put miniatures on a shelf and not play with them, but a lot of like the characters that I have played in Dungeons and Dragons, I love Rangers and I would really be interested in doing like a Rangers capelet. Um, yeah, like that's something that I kind of want to look at some of my minis that I've painted and maybe see if I can figure out a way to knit one of those. I think the issue, it would have to be something shorter because most capes are really long and I feel like that might be kind of hard to knit a long cape without it. Str like, I just think the weight of the fiber alone would make that difficult. But super excited about that. So that's what I've got coming up. What's in the works for you? How are you doing with hobby marrying? Or do you do that? Do you keep your hobbies completely separate? Um, I figure if I want to get to all my hobbies, <laughs> because I have a lot of them, I need to somehow 
intertwine them together so that I can actually enjoy all my hobbies. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I'll let you guys know. Uh, and I think that's really all I've had going on in the last two weeks, other than we had a vet emergency with Maggie, my cat, who she's on the floor. Um, she had a seizure and that was really, really scary. We got her to the vet. Um, she's on antibiotics and sub Q fluids. She has a UTI and they are hoping that the seizure was caused by the UTI. And we won't know until we take her back after she's been on the antibiotics for a while. Uh, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed on that because she's older. She's 16, 17. And we knew she had begun to go into renal failure uh, three to four years ago. Um, but she's pretty healthy and she's, well, she seemed pretty healthy, I guess is what I should say. She plays, she eats, she drinks, she pees, she poops. I mean, we didn't, I did not know that she was sick and I don't, she wasn't behaving like she was sick and she's about ready to jump in my lap. Come on. Um, there she is. You'll see her. Ten. There's her little head. Uh, so she goes back, I think not this Thursday, but next Thursday, and we'll have a much better gauge of, of where she's at. I will say she only has 25% of her kidney function right now. So that, that was frightening when we heard that. Um, you know, you don't ever want your fur babies to be sick, and it's always hard when they get older. And, you know, I think the reality is most of, when all of the animals that I've had in my life have come in, to, have found us, so they've been off the street. We have never actively sought out a pet. Um, they have found, she found us, Maggie found us in a parking lot of a really busy grocery store as a kitten. And I just went into the grocery store and just said, hey, if you don't have a problem with this, there's a kitten in your parking lot. I'm taking it. <laughs> so um, she came home with us and that's how we got her. So I don't know a lot about her history or you know what you know how really how old she was when we got her she was tiny um and then obviously all the rabbits are rescues so they all have their individual stories that are somewhat heartbreaking but you know they're they're all happy now and as you can see harriet's back there cleaning <laughs> cleaning her face um everybody else is really kind of all stretching hunkering down they don't have much to do today um with the fireworks and stuff i they they were okay yesterday it's oh it's july 4th for all of you people out there i personally don't celebrate july 4th i always think of the movie days to confused when the teacher's like just remember what you're celebrating bunch of fat white men who didn't want to pay their taxes <laughs> it's like, i don't know there's some truth to that you know but that's okay. There's some truths that, to our country that aren't very pretty. And I don't know. I'm not. It's not that I'm not patriotic. And it's not that I don't love the United States. Because I do. And I love the freedom that I'm given to speak about it. Um, I think we have a lot of work to do. And I think we need to be very honest about where we came from. I don't know how you move forward if you don't rectify your past. Like you can't act like something didn't happen. You can't rewrite history when everyone knows what you're rewriting is false. So that's my little blurb about that. Um, so, yeah, I don't really celebrate the 4th, but people around here with their fireworks, holy smokes. It was crazy last night. The cats, oh, hi, Maggie. The cats did fine. Um, there was a little bit of stomping with the bunnies, but we have tonight, and I'm... I, uh, just makes me nervous so I hope I hope they're all okay I hope your fur babies are all okay um, and I think that's really all I have for you um, for this podcast I yeah so be kind to one another love each other take care of each other help somebody out who needs some help you know we all need help here and there Sometimes just lending a hand or a shoulder can just work miracles for the person in a way that you, you may not ever know. Um, but it's always good to return the favor or pay it forward, as they say. So just take care of each other. And I will see you in, I guess, like two weeks. Cool. Bye.